Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. The clock is ticking for President Mohamed Morsi. He was given an ultimatum by Egypt's military that he had 48 hours to resign. Now joining us to unpack all of this is Mohamed El Mashid. He is a Cairo-based independent journalist who wrote for Egypt Independent for two years, and he joins us now from Cairo. Thanks for being with us again, Mohamed. Thanks. So, Mohammed, my first question is related to the Americans and what role they play in all of this. Where, where are you seeing the American hand um, behind the scenes and, and things of that nature? Can, can you describe for us what's going on? Uh, one very, uh, very, very telling thing that happened was a uh, guardian today, one of the president's official, one of the president's uh, aides, an unnamed source came out and said that they are hoping that with American support, the military would not be able to implement what they see as a coup. So that was one of the first really big uh, alarm bells that the U.S. is, in fact, as many of the opposition were saying, one of the main forces behind uh, Morsi's uh, claim to power and Morsi's ability to maintain a grip on power and, and maintain um, a, a steady relationship with the military, who's seen as sort of the main... Uh, ally of the U.S. in Egypt. Um, uh, on the other hand, many of the Morsi supporters say that uh, the opposition is backed by America, as represented by the secular um, anti-Islamic uh, forces, especially since al Barada, one of the main, uh, the former head of the U.N. watchdog, one of the main opposition figures, uh, uh, worked, uh, I mean, was part of the U.N. watchdog and worked closely with the U.S. in issues such as uh, Iran and Iraq, uh, uh, nuclear weapons or the search, the, the question of Iran and Iraqi uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, President Obama came out today and, and, and called on uh, Morsi to, uh, well, CNN reported that he called on Morsi to uh, hold early elections. Washington just denied that a few, uh, the State Department just denied that a few minutes ago. Um, and uh, Obama then called on just the general uh, respect of democracy. So, which has many people saying that maybe the U.S. should not comment, period, because it seems like whatever they say um, can and will be used against them um, in the Egyptian uh, popular court of law. But uh, who, who knows really what it is, because the, the, the military um, continued to receive funds, and what, a year ago, Sami Anand was always meeting with, uh, with the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the U.S. and with, uh, with John McCain, especially, and I'm sure Kerry now. Um, so, so the relationship is there. It's not clear where the U.S. Is, is throwing its chips. What is clear is that the U.S. didn't seem to have a problem dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood um, and, and its leaders uh, from the get-go, from before the elections, when they, when they were invited to Washington, when many of them, including the uh, Supreme Guide of the Muslim Brotherhood, met with, uh, with, the, with the U.S. Ambassador here, Ann Patterson. Um, Ann Patterson was speaking uh, before uh, before June 30th. Ann Patterson was uh, was quoted in many Egyptian papers speaking uh, about uh, Egyptian democracy in ways that incited many anti-Muslim and anti uh, pro-Morsi uh, uh, people. So so it's funny that now it seems that the U.S. may be the saving grace for Morsi, or maybe that's just what they happen to think. Okay, let's talk about another major player in the region. Of course, is Qatar. Um, what what is Qatar's agenda, and more specifically, if we can talk about Al Jazeera and their coverage of events, what do you see their role being? Qatar, Qatar's agenda is even, to my eyes, a little more uh, difficult to pin down than the U.S.'s. Uh, they uh, many are very are, 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 are convinced that Qatar has been behind uh, much of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, funding and financing. Uh, none of that has been substantiated, except for for, for reported visits by Muslim Brotherhood uh, leaders to Qatar and uh, and historic ties sort of between the two. Uh, Al Jazeera has been. It depends. I mean, you have Al Jazeera and Al Jazeera Direct, and I'll just uh, called Al Jazeera Mubashir, which means Al Jazeera Direct, and Al Jazeera Mubashir Egypt. So the direct channels, they kind of do what that, that indicates, is that they, they uh, report directly from the scene with mostly live footage. Um, they're more likely to, the Muslim Brotherhood um, leaders are more likely to appear. They're kind of more able to, to, to attract them. So at least in the eyes of the Muslim Brotherhood, they're more level-headed. Um, uh, this 
this uh, this time around, Jazeera has not played as prominent a role as in the uh, 2011 uprising. It's a bit more subdued. People are more uh, there. There are more options now. Anyway, uh, I I have followed Jazeera a bit, but even me, like I, you know, if, if Jazeera took 25 percent of my viewing uh, before nowadays, it's taking maybe five to 10 percent. So, so we certainly know that there's a lot of wheeling and dealing happening behind the scenes. President Morrissey, he met with the Army Chief of Staff, uh, as well as the Prime Minister. And uh, Reuters is also reporting that there is some sort of, quote, roadmap uh, plan uh, that is going to come forward. Uh, what do you see as being some elements that could be included in this in this roadmap? What, what, what sort of resolution do you see coming to the table? Uh, any sort of wheeling and dealing uh, would, is, would include, according to, if you believe the, the Guardian article, would include the U.S., uh, would include the military, would include the presidency, may include the opposition if they are invited and um, goaded on by the military to join. I think um, it doesn't seem like there's a there's a there's a future for Morsi either way. Um, many reports from I mean leaks from um, Muslim Brotherhood meetings uh, indicated that they might even entertain. Uh, early elections or uh, taking Morsi out as long as uh, they're able to, to salvage, I mean, something, which might maybe the Constitution, which may mean um, it, it's, they really don't have many other options. Um, uh, it may be that they, they, they want to avoid uh, being persecuted again, which could happen. I mean, the, the, the relationship between the military and the Muslim Brotherhood was never great. The relationship between police and the Muslim Brotherhood was never great. The fact that police officers actually came out and protested in uniform against Morsi was very telling. Um, so, uh, it, I mean, they're afraid. Like they, they are afraid. It's not just afraid for their political future. I, I believe that they're now afraid for their uh, for, afraid to return to them being persecuted um, indiscriminately as terrorists, as what happened before. Okay, my final question, Mohammed. I am getting a sense that it's mostly the urban areas where we're seeing a lot of anti-Morrissey demonstrations taking place. And the rural areas, the countryside, um, there are a lot of pro-Morrissey uh, supporters. Do you see what's happening right now as being a urban-rural divide in Egyptian politics? Uh, no, no. Actually, I see that uh, the, more, more so than 2011. A lot of a lot of uh, rural uh, rural townships and rural um, governorates or rural dominated governorates are, are, are included, um, such as in Banha, Mansura. Uh, there are many different neighborhoods. Uh, there are many different areas where on TV uh, coming out on on mass against Morsi in ways that. Uh, we never saw them come out before. Uh, it's also uh, worthy to note that uh, during the revolution, many of the opposition forces uh, found great difficulties mobilizing in these areas because uh, pro Mubarak uh, uh, supporters, including uh, tribes in the south and uh, traditional leaders in other areas, uh, they they had a hold on these on on, on the people of their areas. So uh, a lot of these people coming out now could be seen as pro mubarak uh, influence, but at the same time, uh, they were forgotten during the past period, and, and as a result, uh, um, as a result, they were prone to come out once they saw that everyone else was was, was coming out. Um, I mean, the the, the the philosophy of revolution grew uh, over the past two years, and the, and, and, the, and the concept of being able to go out to speak for your rights uh, reached these areas within these past two years especially with the mobilization that happened during the parliamentary elections. Um, let's not forget that a lot of them are Salafi and, and uh, Islamist influence, and they also, uh, you know, they were, they were also influenced to come out due to that. Um, many Salafis, including the main uh, Salafi party and Nur party, weren't uh, necessarily entirely uh, pro-Morsi during this past period. They weren't. Uh, they were very critical. So that might have have uh, encouraged a lot of uh, people in rural areas and and and, and cities in and in, in rural governorates uh, to uh, to join in and come out. Thank you for joining us, Mohammed. Thanks. Thank you.
And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.